hit that. Will, I'm so sorry. I, I'm drinking regular milk today. I'm so sorry. Hey guys, welcome to the Wolfden Podcast. Hey, see ya. It's me. And that's him. Is your belly gonna be okay? <laughs> My butt might not. <laughs> guys, hello. Uh, today we're talking about, oh, three podcasts in a row. <laughs> Talking about emulators emulating. On yep. Why but, is that chair? You know what? That might be a fine spot for it. Is it gonna? Is the camera gonna get you? Is it in the way? Actually, it's on camera right now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, third time in a row talking third about time. emulators. But on I think this might, be, this might be it for a while. We had to because last week we said don't get any emulators yeah. on the iPhone yet. And now we're gonna tell you get emulators now on you your can iPhone. Get them. Yeah. So it's fine now. Uh, but thanks for being here, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you to uh, nobody because nobody gave us anything so far. Hey, give us money. <laughs> a lot to talk about today in the way of iPhone emulators, and then also uh, <laughs> Nintendo had an indie world. Remember that? Yes. Mid. I didn't even watch it. I looked at a uh, fan of the decks Twitter thread of all of the announcements. And their Steam pages. <laughs> uh, and then what else? Uh, oh, Embracer Group news. We yes, love that. It's actually big Embracer Group news. Um, there's that. We got news on the Meta Quest. Going to be more than just made by Meta. I'm interested in that. They're taking the Valve approach. Yeah. Uh, we now have a definitive answer why a certain Nintendo character has not appeared in Fortnite. True. And you won't believe the reason. You will 100% believe the reason. <laughs> what we don't have here is uh, something that just broke like a f like uh, recently. Okay. Um, the FTC now said that there's no more non-compete clauses. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we don't need to write, read a whole article yeah. about that. It's just a, that is notable because uh, now, <laughs> you know how they always fire game developers? Yeah. Well, now they can move freely between companies mm -hmm. without being uh, uh, reprimanded. Yeah. So uh, previously, non-compete clauses, I think, even work if you got fired. Yeah. So uh, if you get fired, you can't work for another company yeah. first for X <laughs> amount of time, which is horrible. So yeah. now, even if you have one already in place, uh, you can still... Go or uh, go about your business yeah. and go to. Uh, that's good for uh, competition. Yeah, because then great uh, for competition. Yeah. The, it's called a non compete. Now you can. Now these companies can compete they, they can against each compete. other <laughs> to pay their fucking workers good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, Farmer Gooch, it was five dollars. Oh, thank you. They they give us there money sometimes. Uh, first, we'll talk about Delta Emulator on iOS, baby. Yes. Uh, where are you? Finally, it's yes. here. So Delta emulator is, uh, this is notable. I've been waiting for an emulator to come to iOS that I've heard of before. Uh -huh. Delta is notable because it's been on the alt store mm -hmm. for years, P possibly over a decade. Yeah. Um, the alt store, you need to jailbreak your phone to get. Mm -hmm. So this was a jailbreak app that is now finally allowed onto the actual Apple yes. app store. So it's. A legitimate app that mm -hmm. people have used for years, and now you can finally use it without having to do a whole lot of tomfoolery yeah. on your phone. Uh, it's been it hasn't been long since Apple started allowing retro game emulators on the app on the App Store. Uh, we've already seen one notable controversy after the company pulled the Game Boy emulator IGBA from the storefront. It turned out that IGBA, which hit the top of the download charts, was a near carbon copy of another emulator submitted for review. Game Boy for iOS uh, developer Riley uh, Testute claimed that IGBA was a knockoff of GBA for iOS uh, that was packed with ads and trackers. As it turns out, Testute's Delta, the successor to GBA for iOS, is now available for free in the App Store. The original emulator picked up some buzz a decade ago after Testute uh, found a way for iPhone users to sideload the Game Boy Advance emulator without having to jailbreak their device. Um, Apple eventually closed the iOS loophole, and of course, Nintendo was none too happy about the emulator. However, you can now download Delta free from the App Store directly without having to worry about sideloading. Along with GBA titles, the app supports NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy Color, and Nintendo DS games. With the promise of more platforms to come, the app supports third-party controllers as well as quick saves, uh, cheat codes, and data syncing between devices using Google Drive or Dropbox. 
There's even local multiplayer for up to four players, though you'll probably want to use an iPad or mirror your phone to the TV in that case. Uh, you'll need to supply any games you want to play on the emulator. To stay on the right side of the law, you'll need to dump games that you already own into ROM files. While iPhone and iPad users outside of the EU can snag Delta from the App Store directly, the process is a little different for those who live in the live in the block. I guess that's Europe. That's what you call it over there. I don't know. <laughs> America rules. Uh, <laughs> Test Dude is uh, also behind third-party app marketplace called Alt Store, uh, which iPhone users in the EU can now uh, more easily install a version of. I didn't know he was a part of Alt Store. I did not either. Uh, it looks like uh, so. I went to the Alt Store website. Delta is the first thing on on, on the Alt right. Store website. <laughs> uh, so if you're in the EU, uh, Alt Store is just available to sideload yes. just on your so, so that's completely different. You can get the Alt Store version of Delta, which I would recommend highly because it's a more updated version of yes. Delta. Uh, the version that we have on iOS is a little, uh, I think it's a little older and it's a little more nerfed. Okay. So like Will said, it's all Nintendo uh, systems from uh, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all the way up to DS. Yes. Um, the alt store version has Genesis and some other. Stuff. I was gonna say because like a lot of news reports were saying that it does support Genesis. It does, but not. the iPhone version specifically, the US iPhone version specifically, does not. Yeah. So I'd imagine that would come. Yeah. Soon. Eventually. Yeah. As they have it, it's available on mm -hmm. the alt store. I'd imagine that stuff from the alt store will make it its way over to iOS. Um. But yeah, this is I'm I'm happy with how yeah. it is anyway. I'm I'm happy to get anything and any yeah. sort of emulators over on the uh, Apple App Store. Yeah. Uh that was a reason why I had an Android phone back in the day was because I wanted to play my emulators. I yeah. wanted to be able to yeah. mess around a with it. A friend of mine like he switched over to Android not because of emulators, but that was like a nice little like cherry on top of Yeah, that was a big his deal reason to me. for it. Yeah. Uh and then I switched back to iPhone because uh, the camera was too good. Yeah. <laughs> but now I can have the best of both worlds. Yep. Uh, but again, if you're in the EU, you get a little bit of a better uh, deal because you could, you get so much more. Well, I don't know because apparently the alt store is um, a dollar uh, a euro fifty per year. That's, That's a nothing. subscription fee. Yeah, I know it's nothing, nothing, but like. So another we'll, we'll in get America more. in America it's free. We'll get more <laughs> into the reasons why I think alt store is nice to have. Uh, oh yeah, but. Have you tried Delta? I have. How, I, tell me. I loaded. About it. Uh, I didn't mess around with it too much. I loaded. I don't know why I loaded the Castlevania games from GBA on there. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because those are the first th three things I saw, and I loaded those up. And yeah, boots great, runs well. Yeah, all the emulations well. like great. Yeah, I enjoy it. I gotta load more games on there that I would actually play. And I thought I'm not gonna play the Castlevania games, but like. Something that I could like quickly pick up and play, like Mario or whatnot. Yeah, I didn't load everything that yeah. I have on there. Uh, I don't. I kind of don't like that. I have to put all my games on my phone. Like I like. Yeah. Uh, th there's an, an another app that I used to use called. It's not an app. It's a web app uh, called Afterplay, uh -huh. and that pulls from the cloud. Right. So you don't have to actually have it locally on your phone. It just mm. pulls it in a cache, uh, and I like that a lot. But. This is an app that runs on your phone, so it's a little different. Yeah. They do have a way to sync it to Dropbox, but it I think it still stores stuff locally. Yeah. It just kind of has like a cache of stuff that yeah. it like that it's just all of your user data basically. It keeps all of your ROMs and stuff, but they're all like encrypted in a weird way where you can't like really access them. Yeah. Um but I have that set up anyway. Yeah, because that's good if you have multiple devices. If you yeah, have, uh, if I want to like pull it up on my iPad, all my stuff is synced, yeah. uh, to to the cloud, to my Dropbox. Um, but yeah, I Mario is really hard to play with touch controls. Yeah, that's the thing. Like these are not games that are were made for touch controls. Like they would benefit greatly from like an eight bit do controller or even like a dual sense or xbox controller yeah to and play with them luckily you can connect basically any controller mm -hmm. you want over to on, on the iphone with bluetooth yeah um and i have the iphone 15 and that's got USB C. so mm -hmm. all of the controllers and shit that i have for uh the android phones that i used to use for emulation all that stuff works on yeah. on on this and delta Sets up the controls pretty much perfectly right out of the box. If you connect a controller to it, it just knows what all the buttons do. Mm -hmm. 
I'll say that uh, with the Apidu little tiny guy, the little yeah. tiny controller. Uh, with I think all controllers, if you press start and select at the same time, it'll bring up the Delta menu. Okay. For whatever reason, on that Ape Do controller, when I press start and select, it brings up the menu. But then from that point on, start brings up the menu. Okay. Just, just pressing start. So start does not press pause in the game Got anymore. It. it brings up the menu. And I don't know why that is. I have to turn the whole thing off and turn it back on to, uh, to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like a, a, a weird little bug. Otherwise... It's what you'd expect from a from an emulator. It's got save states and whatnot. Yeah. There is a way to bring to import your save files into it, okay. which uh, took me a second to realize. But if you just hold your thumb onto a game, it'll bring up a little context menu, and it says import, save, export, save. Okay. So when you're playing Castlevania, if you want to bring it then over to your computer or to your Steam, I mean, uh, uh, my MSI, MSI claw. claw, you can. Uh, Hold down the 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 hold the game down the box art down and it'll yeah, bring yeah. up export uh save file and you can just export mm -hmm. it and then you I, can bounce it back and forth. I do like how I mean it doesn't do this for Aria of Sorrow for some reason, but like the box art carried over and it looks nice. So and... the box art it pulls from uh its own thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it's weird that like Aria of Sorrow is not there. I bet if you rename well let me see let me see. Uh, what... Hold on, I... let me go back to the name. I I bet it's a weird name. Nope. <laughs> 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 that's weird i don't yeah. know why i had some some files uh it didn't read some files some files had some issues Rename. like bomberman um 64 i had to rename yeah. it. it i had like the rom i had was like v64 or something i had to rename it to n64 and it worked fine so uh change artwork uh photo library no that's my photo library add one of your own pictures <laughs> yeah she's Dude. making one of my kids faces yeah uh, change artwork. No, there is a games database. Here we go. It should Aria of. Oh, because it's a colon and not a dash. There you go. There you uh, go. There you go. Uh, that's good that you can find it. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that. There, there's a lot of website. What's the one website everybody uses to scrape artwork? I don't, it's, it's not Moby should... Games, is it? No, the chat will remind me. Moby Games is for like actually, if you want to print artwork, right? Right. Yeah. There's, there's websites where it's specifically for emulation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this app is... Uh, it's got enough customization where it's... Uh, it feels like you could do a lot with it. Yeah. Uh, it's not the most customizable. Sc Screenscraper.fr, I think okay. is the one that everybody uses. Thank you very much, Metascension. Uh, so... Yeah, the only, there's only, uh, everything kind of just works right away. You need to put your own ROMs there, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the only one that's a little weird is DS. Did you get DS working? I did not on? work, I did not try DS, no. So DS, you need BIOS files for some reason. Yes. Uh, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to legitimately obtain BIOS files. Okay. Luckily, you just go to Google, <laughs> and it's like the first thing that comes yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, you need three different files for some reason, and they, they all just come up in like mm -hmm. a little Google Drive. Um, so that's very easy to do. Uh, everything that I've done with it has been pretty easy. Uh, there's been a couple of hangups that I've had, but every, uh, people help me out, and then I'm able to figure it out. Okay. It's, not, it's not the best like uh, uh, UX design, but it's yeah. enough to, to do what you need to do mm -hmm. to, to get in there where you need to. Uh, the best game I've uh, been a the the best use case I've seen is touchscreen games on the DS. Yeah. Rhythm Heaven is fucking awesome. <laughs> there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah. But, uh, or it feels like there's a little bit yeah. of a delay. Maybe I'm just terrible at the game. But uh, that works phenomenally. Okay. Because you just touch the screen. Yeah. Also, uh, Willow Davis, uh, mortal enemy of the show, <laughs> uh, he said that he played Mario, and what he did was... You go. You can bring up the menu in Delta, mm -hmm. and you can select to hold down a button. So you can just hold down the B button okay. to run in Mario. Yeah, yeah. So you can just all constantly hold that down. So that helps so that you don't have to press too many buttons mm -hmm. at once. So that's cool. Anyway, why don't we first say thank you to Lorian for the 15 months. Woohoo, happy Tuesday, boys. I can finally emulate on my iPhone. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Majin Jameson, thanks for the 25 months, and Rise Frog, thanks for the 37 months. What is up, Wolf Bros? I have been playing 
Kingdom Come Deliverance, and it's been a good time. Since it's hockey season, I am curious, which New York hockey team would you root for? We are Long Islanders. We are Islanders fans, baby. Or we were, and then they moved. It doesn't matter where they play. As long... No, that's our dad, a Rangers fan, talking right there. Okay? He's that... been a Rangers fan for life. Though. Yeah, I know. It, the, he's also senile. So... <laughs> I don't like that they moved. I don't like that they, they moved They moved either. to a shitty spot. No, okay. Have you been to the Almont Stadium yet? I passed it all the time. The UBS Stadium? Yeah. I passed like, it all the time. It's actually it's a very nice arena. It's very easy to get to if you take the train. That's fine. Yes. The one before that, was that Barclays? Barclays, yeah. Fuck that. That was stupid. That sucks. That, they should have never from gone to... Sucks. Yeah. I used to freaking live by there. Yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't yeah. want to go no, there. No, that was awful. Um, but yeah, the, Al the Almont Stadium is good. It looks so, nice. Yeah, it's nice. It looks. Yeah, I have not seen a game there yet. I've seen two concerts there though. Because it used to fucking be right yeah, here on the Long Island, man. Nassau Coliseum should be there. Yeah, there's a lot Long Islanders. Yeah. There's still a Coliseum there. I know, and they don't do hockey there. That's so dumb. Ugh, Why? Yeah. Was it a money thing? It was a money thing. Like the, they were trying to like the, the Nassau Coliseum was a garbage hole. It was our <laughs> garbage hole, but it was a garbage <laughs> hole. And like they were trying for like years to like raise funds and get money to like rebuild and make it a proper, you know, stadium that could compete with like other real hockey team stadiums. And, uh, uh, Kate Murray, who was like, uh, he like a top of level official in the Nassau County government said no. And then that was it. They, they had to like leave and find another place to play hockey. So they stayed at the Barclays center for too long. That's like the only thing they had. I know. They they did wrestling at Nassau Coliseum last what December? Yeah, they did a wrest. Who, who, who was, it was it? AEW. AEW. Yeah, that's why yeah. they, they did <laughs> AEW at the Nassau Coliseum. And somebody was here who was from out of state. Yeah, uh, and I was like, oh yeah, my friends are going to see uh, wrestling at the at the Coliseum. And they're like, Coliseum, Long Island Coliseum. I was like, yeah, Nassau Coliseum. Yeah. The Nassau Coliseum, isn't that where the Islanders played? And yeah. I was like, yeah. They're like, what's there now? And I'm like. It's still okay, there, like, literally nothing. They, do they don't concerts, do anything. They do concerts there. They they do everything the Nassau Coliseum used to do except hockey. But I mean, they don't really do concerts there. There's nothing there. They used to do them all the yeah. time. They don't do shit there anymore. Yeah. So, oh hey, it's Wolf Den Dad. Oh, Your hey, father Bill. used to get you great free tickets to the Islanders. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Rangers, since there were only six teams still at Madison Square Garden. That's true. I believe the Rangers are consistently ranked as the worst of the original six teams, Dad. So why do <laughs> why you got to root for the losers? And then Jack Dimock says, Ranger, a hardly knower. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about... So I mentioned before... I like the alt store. Yes. Uh, that's how I was able to play Dolphin on my iPad. I don't even think I jailbroke the iPad. I just okay. had to do some tomfoolery to okay. like get it to where it is. a little bit of a pain in the ass. Got it, got it. Oh, no. It was, somebody in the chat reminded me earlier. You need a developer account. Okay. I, I think that that severely limits the stuff that you could do if it's not just straight up yeah. jailbroken. Uh, but I got a developer account and I got a uh, freaking uh, Dolphin on my iPad. Um, and it runs fine. Um, but, uh, that's the alt store is currently the only way you're going to get dolphin to work on your iPad or on your iPhone. Cause, okay. uh, dolphin does not seem likely to be coming to, uh, the iOS app store anytime soon. Uh, so let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, you want me to read it? Yeah. Uh, and what will undoubtedly be sad news uh, to many, the developer of the popular GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin has confirmed the app won't be coming to iPhone. Over the weekend, o Oatmeal Dome, the developer behind Do Dolphin iOS, uh, shared a blog post explaining why really? iPhone users uh, won't see Dolphin or its variants on the App Store. The release behind the reason behind Dolphin uh, Dolphin's App Store absence is that Apple does not allow just-in-time or JIT 
technology on its platform, an essential tool that enables Dolphin to run with good performance. Oatmeal Dome further explained why JIT is so important for the Dolphin experience. Did we talk about this last we've week? Ta- we've talked about JIT before. Okay, I remember this. Yes, because JIT is a funny word, and I would remember saying it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the GameCube and Wii have a PowerPC based CPU inside them. All modern Apple devices use an ARM based CPU. This is impossible. Uh, this is impossible to directly run PowerPC code on an ARM CPU and vice versa. Therefore, uh, we want to run a GameCube or Wii game on an iPhone. It is necessary to translate the game's PC power, PowerPC code to ARM so that the CPU can understand it. Uh, JIT enables the power PC based uh, to ARM based CPU translation and Oatmeal Dough confirms that Dolphin uses something called just in time JIT recompiler to achieve this. Whenever the emulated console wants to run a game, Dolphin will use its JIT to translate the PC, the power PC code to ARM and then execute the results. Uh, the Dolphin iOS team uh, have approached Apple to try and get Dolphin running on iPhone using JIT without much luck. We submitted a DMA um, interoperability request to Apple for JIT support, but uh, Apple denied the request a few weeks ago. Oatmeal Dome suggests that Apple has security concerns re- uh, relating to the implementation of JIT, um, using that the platform holder could consider uh, the technology a security risk. It is technically possible to run Dolphin on an iPhone without JIT. However, the downgrade in performance is substantial as evidence uh, in the videos below from Oatmeal Dome's YouTube channel. Oh, I didn't even see these. Yeah. Uh, it appears the developer understandably isn't keen on releasing Dolphin iOS in a compromised state, revealing that we would likely uh, get endless complaints from users about poor performance. App review might also just reject us anyway because the app is unusable. Omeal Dome's blog uh, comes a fortnight, not that kind, after Apple revised their App Store guidelines, uh, allowing retro game emulators onto the iOS App Store. Um, since the since then, the emulator Delta has taken over the App Store. Blah blah blah. So, so the uh, the short answer is that uh, the GameCube used uh, power. PC yes. architecture and new Apple devices use ARM architecture, mm-hmm. only different architecture, and they need a way to translate the PowerPC architecture to the ARM architecture. And the easiest way to do that is just in time recompiling. Yes. Um, and that's something that is available, <laughs> but they don't let uh, App Store developers use for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and they submitted a request to use it. Apple said no. So there, that's the end of that. I would be willing to bet that eventually there will just be another way to do this. Yeah. Because that's just how emulation has been working. Yeah. I didn't know Omeal Dome was the developer of this specifically. Yeah. Um, I mean, it seems like Dolphin is is the type of program that like there's different offshoots of, like Linux. So I'd yeah. imagine like someone's going to take the Dolphin code and find a way to get it to work on ARM-based architecture. Well, it seems like that's this is how Dolphin works. It, it uses yeah. the recompiler. But... uh. Yeah, I think that these new Apple devices are becoming so powerful that that extra power is going to be used to pick up the slack of the recompiler. Yeah. That is, you know, they, they, they'll someone will figure it out eventually. It's just not going to be as easy as copying the alt store version and putting it on iOS. Right. It's not going to be like how Delta was. It's going to take a lot longer uh-huh. to get GameCube emulation on on your fancy expensive iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, it'll probably happen at some point. Yeah. I would like to see 3DS emulation. I would like to see all that stuff. But uh, we'll see. Because you know what? Time. DS runs great yeah. on the phone. Okay. So that answers that. That answers yeah. why you might not be getting GameCube on your phone. At least not yet. At least not yet. I think I am I am holding through that you will eventually get it. Yeah. If, if not this year, then definitely like by next year. No, it'll be a while. Like, yeah. it, it'll it'll take a yeah. while. But I feel like this is the type of thing where like people will work pretty quickly mm-hmm. for because like emulation is already now like popular on iOS, and if they see you know they see there's a need for it, they will like work as fast as they can to get a a dolphin like program on iOS. I would say just continue to be very cautious with the. Uh, emulation apps that you would get like 
this is a perfect time for somebody to do an offshoot of Dolphin uh-huh. that is just there to garner ad revenue and steal all of your uh, yeah. location data. <laughs> oh, yeah. So don't download anything until you see a YouTuber make a video on it. Yes. <laughs> um, someone that you trust. So, like, mm-hmm. uh, don't go too crazy. Delta confirmed pretty good. Yeah. Try, try Delta. Uh, anything else you see? Don't go too crazy. It is really cool, though, having Delta and just being able to text somebody a ROM hack. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just like send, or a save file or something. Just be like, here you go. Yeah. Here's uh, your Pokemon Ruby with all shinies in your party or something like that. That's pretty cool to see. Just don't do that if you're in Japan. You will go to jail. Uh, all right. Let's talk about that indie world that happened. Yes. So uh, this happened. I yeah again. I didn't even watch it. I I was nonplussed by it. Yeah, I think I think I, I caught it afterwards. I know, forgot I that it yeah. happened. I they announced it. It was the next day, and then I went through the whole following day, and then I was like, oh wait, there was an indie one. Like I didn't even <laughs> see anybody talk about it. Or it anything. wasn't like, you know. Uh, I always hate like being down on like Nintendo Directs and like Indie Worlds, especially. Yeah. But there, there wasn't really anything that was like, I would say like was show stopping. There was like a few titles that I thought were interesting, but I don't know if I would go out of my way to like, you know, that I have none of them pre ordered. I have not, I'm not like interested in any of them on like Steam or anything. That's- I might have wish listed some. Yeah. Uh, there are some that I'm interested in for sure. Yeah. I should, uh, I shouldn't be too hard on it because it is an indie world. You gotta, yeah. you gotta go into that with, you know, your expectations in check. Because yeah. anytime Nintendo makes an announcement, it's easy to be like, "Oh shit, Nintendo's doing an announcement!" But it's Ooh. indie games, so they can only be so big, yeah. you know. But I would expect Nintendo to, you know, uh, put a little more, put a little more into the announcement. Yeah. Know? But I mean, it is, it is what it is. Anyway, here's the games. Yeah. Uh, starting off, Little Kitty, Big City, coming May 9th. Uh, They've been, this has been in a few of their announcements. Has it? Yeah, I've seen this a uh, bunch. All right, well, if you like cats but didn't like Stray, there's a, there's a cat game for you. I don't like cats, and I didn't like Stray. Where's the, the game for me? There isn't one. They don't make there games is one. for Bob. There's one. It's called Nintendo's <laughs> Chihuahua <laughs> Friends. They got to bring that back. They got to bring Yeah, that's a perfect phone game. Yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. So, uh, f- next up is Yars Rising. Now, this game piqued my dumb ass because <laughs> are you familiar Way with. Way forward. Are you familiar with uh, Yars Revenge? No. Yars Revenge is considered like the actual like best game ever released on the Atari 2600. Uh, okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a vertical shooter. Not a vertical, it's a horizontal shooter in a way. And this is like a spiritual successor to it, but it's a fully reworked Metroidvania oh. type game. And I, I'm looking at. What'd you call it? Yars Revenge? This is Yars Rising. Yeah, but the old one's Yars, Yars Revenge. Revenge. Okay. Yes. Yars Revenge, uh, developed by Howard Scott Warshaw. Also, the same guy who made uh, E.T. for the Atari. He's the only man uh, who can lay claim to having the best and worst game on the same system. <laughs> um, so. Like this is like this is all like interesting to me until I watched the trailer and they went they leaned really hard into the hey I'm Yar and this is my game like the uh, really uh, hyper cute anime girl I'm like ah uh, <laughs> I don't want to sit with this chick for however many hours you're gonna have to mute it oh I am oh, it stinks because it does look really cool and I think this is a nice way to like take something that nobody cares about. And like reinvented in a genre that people actually do care about. Looks like Shadow Complex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Seems cool. Uh, next we got Refined Self. Yeah. Refined Self, the personality test game. Games can really show someone's personality, don't you think? <laughs> Skip. <laughs> next. Uh, Sticky Business, August 17th. Uh, Dog! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Uh, creative, re- uh, creative relaxing 2D game developed by Spellgarden Games. Players will create uh, stickers, pack orders, and listen to stories of customers. 
Cool. Dear Hen in the chat says, Bob is a dog person with a cat personality. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, Anton Blast. Now, this was, uh, I think it was at PAX. Okay. And uh, I think I, did I meet the developer? I don't know. I think I met the developer. And side note, every other developer that I talked to uh -huh. said, you got to try Anton Blast. Okay. So this is a fan favorite among other developers. That says something. So Anton Blast is an explosive, action-packed retro platformer featuring a destructive twist to classic gameplay and a loving hand-animated pixel aesthetic inspired by Game Boy Advance, blown up and reimagined for the modern era. This, I think, is another Pizza Tower situation where it's inspired by uh, Wario Land. Got it. So you're like, you know, speeding through silky like, smooth 60 frames per second action platforming and explosive escapes. Yeah, it, it literally okay. uh, looks like Pizza Tower. Um, presumably it was in development when Pizza Tower was also in development. Yeah. So it's not like trying to rip it off or anything, but yeah, they're yeah. both taking inspiration oh, from this, WarioWare. Yeah. But it looks great. Yeah. No, it looks like fun. And uh, when, is, when is this out? Is I... November 12th. Let me make sure this is on my wish list. Yeah. Uh, or even see if it's on Steam already. Oh, good point. Yeah. I'm going to pull up uh, the Twitter thread that... Uh, oh, that you were talking about before? Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Fan of the Deck has his little... Oh, I clicked on it. Ah. Fan of the oh, there it is. There you go. <laughs> Here's the Steam page, babe. Uh, release date November twelfth. Oh, that's a long ways away. Oh, okay. So it's launching. Oh, with... it's a demo. Oh, there you go. Hell yeah! I don't. I bet there's no demo on Switch. <laughs> nope. Uh, next up is Valley Peaks. Uh, the mountains are calling in this riveting first-person climbing platformer. Each mountain is like a puzzle, and your job is to make your way to the top of every ridge um, to place uh, radio towers from the froggy inhabitants of Valley Peaks. There is a demo on Switch, according to Mega Dragon. Oh, All right, try out Anton Bless. Uh, next up is Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. Uh, we've heard about this too in yes. a different uh, Nintendo game. Yeah. Um, a woman summoned by an eccentric man to participate in a project in an old hotel somewhere in Central Europe becomes embroiled in a game of illusions, increasingly dangerous and surreal. And you got Laser Eyes. And you got Laser <laughs> Eyes. That sounds sick. Uh, next up is Europa. Coming 2024, on the moon Europa, a lush terraform paradise of Jupiter's shadow, an android named Z sets out uh, in search of answers. Cool. Wow. Awesome. Right. Sick, dude. TMNT Splintered Fate. Uh, join the Ninja Turtles as they rescue Splinter from the clutches of the Foot Clan amidst the chaos in New York City. Experience fast-paced roguelike action with, rogue -like. with unique powers for each turtle. Team up with friends for co-op gameplay. Explore iconic locations and, fast and face classic TMNT foes. Don't miss the adrenaline packed adventure in this fight, adapt, repeat, uh, portal loop. Uh, this was this game, an iPhone game? This was an this was an Apple Arcade game. Okay, but this was a very popular Apple Arcade game. People seem to really enjoy this take on the TMNT formula, which I think is like Ninja Turtles. They're beat 'em up games. That's all they really seem to do with them. I think adding rogue elements to it like is a nice way to like liven it up, and also the fact that it's not a side scroller like helps. I think. Also, this is this is just for me, but it's heavily the artwork is heavily inspired by clearly the IDW incarnation of the Ninja Turtles, which is hands down the best version of the Ninja Turtles ever oh, of all time. Cool. So it, it's not based on the 87 cartoon like everything seems to be. So I am definitely keeping an eye on this. I may actually play a roguelike. I just I just Ninja Turtles. I just hit get on my on, yeah. on, on the Apple Arcade version. Uh, and then it said, try Apple Arcade. And I was like, I fucking have Apple Arcade. And then it took me to a new page. And then I went back and now it's downloaded. I don't know okay. what happened. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting it on my phone. It's on Apple Arcade. Right, so I'm just getting it on my I phone. I don't have Apple Arcade. Do you do a family plan? <laughs> <laughs> I already have a family plan with my wife. You can't fuck around with family plan Apple stuff. You really can't. It, it, they, they are They're, very strict yeah. about uh, uh, fa Apple family yeah. plans. Because there's too much shit that could yeah that could overlap. I had to create a family plan with my wife because all she does is like take pictures of the kids and like her phone. Yeah, was just that's like, the thing yeah. is the iCloud. Yeah, is what's locking you in. Like I tried to get mom on mine because of the uh because she wanted to use uh, what is it, Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, and that would boot her off of the iCloud. Yeah. And you can't have that. Yeah. No. 
I pay for the two terabyte iCloud service. I want to fucking go. I want to strangle somebody at Apple. Yeah. Because I don't need iCloud. I have Dropbox. Right. I pay for that. Mm -hmm. And they force you into. F finally, I I gave in and I paid the two dollars a month. Yeah. And then that immediately filled up. I don't have anything in the iCloud. Right. There's nothing there. Yeah. It just. It's like it's like water going into a glass. It just, right, right. It just t takes up the yeah. shape of it. Anyway, that's what, we, that's what we should be protesting. Cat Quest Three, iCloud. another another cat and one game drive. For you, one drive shouldn't exist either. One drive used to be good when they gave you a lot of storage for free, and then they'd stop doing that. So now One Drive sucks. One Drive sucks. They for, they try to force you into it whenever you start a Windows mm -hmm. machine. And they sync your whole desktop to it yeah. without telling you they're doing that. So now everything's fucked. Mm -hmm. Cat Quest. Cat Quest 3. More cat shit. <laughs> More cat shit. We got to stop. I think this is a pirate cat thing. <laughs> oh, kind of looks sick. Ahoy, ye brave oh, buccaneers and fearless feline adventures. Yep, it's cat. It's it cat pirates. The, the freaking cinematic looks so cool. Yeah. That looks awesome. And then it goes to this gameplay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Stitch. Stitch. Available now. Uh casual puzzle game with embroidery on its on a numbered grid. The main objective is to fill the levels areas with no gaps to complete hoops. Cool. I thought this was like snipper clips, yeah. but it looks, it looks this I feel like this is like a very like you ever play Zenbound on the phone? No. It's a it's a game where like you have like a toy a uh, wooden toy. And a string, and you gotta wrap the string around the toy. And every time you wrap the string, you paint the toy. And it's like a very like relaxing game mm -hmm. in a way. I feel like this is like along those lines. It's a very real re relaxing. Yeah, I think this is the only one that's not on Steam. Okay, there you go. For, for Switch the, exclusive for the record. Bzz. I think this is Nintendo's game. Am I wrong? Uh, I don't. I have no idea. I think it is. I think Nintendo helped develop this or something. Become a tiny ZX eight thousand robot and begin your journey through a beautiful pixel art world inspired by game I, games iconic to the platform genre. All right, so it's like a not a fan game, but like a a man game because it says uh, pixel art worlds inspired by games iconic to the platform genre. It's a platform. It's, yeah, it's, it's an indie platform. It's a homage platformer because it's yeah. got you know does it have a demo that's 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 oh, wait, the important should thing. say it at the end coming this summer it's definitely on steam already so right you can try it out there but give it a try uh next is uh schism no uh skim shim shim this game looked kind of cool yeah uh 3d platformer integrates light shadow and animation into its gameplay you basically platform. It's an isometric game, but you platform between shadows. Yeah, and it looks kind of really cool. There's like yeah. a there's like a lively world that you're that you're kind of bouncing along. Between. Yeah, looks really cool. Yeah, like the Bluey episode where they have to stay in the shadows, otherwise they'll fall into the water and get eaten by crocodiles. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that one everybody's seen. <laughs> everybody has seen it. Asshole. Animal Well. This is Donkey's game, right? Donkey's game. This is Donkey's game. We've talked about this before. We've talked about yeah. it. Uh I actually never played it. I uh I watched Wood play it at uh Pax. And then you got embarrassed by Wood in front of Donkey. Yes. 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 Yes, I saw that video. <laughs> uh Duck Detective the Secret Salami. Solve crime solving crime is no walk in the pond. You are a down on his luck detective who also happens to be a duck. Down on his luck. I need to know why. Yeah. Uh, As a duck, this, what does he have to looks, worry about? This game looks fun. It just this game is like a good old duck detective time. It's gotta be uh just uh, Detective Pikachu, but with a duck, better. Yeah, because Detective Pikachu, the last one, uh, was ass. Yeah, the Salami Bandit. They gotta get the Salami Bandit. Someone stealing lunch. Uh, another crab's treasure. This um, is the Souls like uh crab game. Yes, uh, the second game from Agro Crab. This one uh, does not have a trailer for some reason. Oh, interesting. <coughs> All right. And then finally, the um, the one more thing was uh, SteamWorld Heist 2. Get ready to join Captain Leeway and set sail on the Great Sea in this turn-based strategy game. Bullets ricochet with deadly precision as you go on heist to find epic loot whilst trying to figure out uh, just what is causing the water crisis. 
put together your ragtag Steambot uh, Steam crew and sail across the seas to uncover mysteries that surround you. I guess that was the one more thing because that was uh, one more that's thing. like a triple I yeah. game because mm -hmm. everyone knows yeah. Steam World. Is it like, did, I mean, they must have sold a lot because the marketing for that is they, they shove Steam World down your face. Well, there's a lot of Steam. There's Steam World Dig, there's Steam World Heist, there's Steam World's Your Mother. There's like a lot of them. <laughs> And that's just Steam World. Yeah. There's no, it's just Steam World 2. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other ones. Yeah. Steam World Build. That's, an, that's another one. I, I, I never heard of Build before. So that's it. The only one I put on my wish list is Anton Blast. Right. Did they not have a. What's that taxi one? Yellow Taxi Goes Room. Is that not coming to Switch? Oh, I don't know. It wasn't in this recap. Yellow Taxi Goes Room. Download demo now, bitch. It's on... Uh, oh, it's available. The whole game's available. Okay. Uh, it's on uh, Steam. It looks really good. It's like uh, Crazy Taxi meets uh, Mario 64. Oh, wow. Looks really cool. Anyway. Uh, moving on. Let's do... Let's talk about Target. Yes. Getting rid of physical media. Uh, retail chain Target has responded to recent reports claiming that it will stop selling physical media, revealing that it will continue to sell physical media, but will limit the number of copies it sells in its retail stores. A Target spokesperson told IGN that the retail chain will be transitioning to limited assortment of DVDs they carry in retail stores. The official website will still offer thousands of titles to customers to purchase. Uh, though the retail stores are pivoting to a more selective approach, in what physical media it carries, a spokesperson told IGN that it will offer select DVDs in its stores uh, when it, uh, sorry, it will offer select DVDs in its stores when it a new release, I guess when it is a new release or during key times throughout the year when they are more popular, such as Black Friday or during an anti-Prime Day sale. Based on our guest shopping patterns and broader industry trends, we are transitioning the limited assortment of DVDs we carry in our stores to Target.com, uh, where guests will continue to find thousands of titles, the spokesperson said. Moving forward, we'll offer select DVDs in stores uh, when they are newly released uh, or during key times throughout the year when they are more popular, like for gift giving during the holidays. The spokesperson also confirmed that this new policy will not impact physical games sold in retail stores. This will only impact physical copies of movies and TV shows. Uh, Target's response comes a day after uh, the Twitter account, the president of physical media <laughs> posted that its sources um, told the account that the retail giant would stop selling physical media in stores and online by next year. Though Target is not entirely abandoning it, the pivot to being more selective in the latest is the latest in a continuing worrying trend for the state of physical media. So we can assume they're still going to sell games for yes. the time being, yeah. uh, just like Best Buy did. I mean, that may, it makes sense. They're going to follow what Best Buy did. They're all yeah, going to do this. Eventually. But at the same time, like I was just in Target today. Mm. I was in two different Targets, one today and then the different one the other day. And like the the physical media section is like shrinking, like pretty drastically. The DVD section is like literally just an end cap in the back, yeah. And that's for like everything, new releases and like old stuff. The games, the new releases are in an end cap in the back, barely stocked. The older games they sell, if this one one side of the aisle is PlayStation, the other side of the aisle is Xbox, and they have like the a game per a copy of each game and then that's it and a lot of it's like even like barren so target has never been good for getting anything that's more than like a year old you yeah. know like they're you're only getting popular stuff and new releases yeah and stuff. um this is only good news for gamestop because <laughs> like Target will continue to sell new releases for like, well, they did they say new releases for movies? I think they said movies. Uh, what do they say? But I'd imagine, I'd imagine games are going to get smaller and smaller, and they'll yeah. only have the new releases uh, eventually. Yeah, they're uh, they're going to have a limited assortment of DVDs. Yeah. Uh, so eventually, this is going to happen with games too. The game section will probably get smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll probably only have new stuff. And they're just like, now they all, they only kind of have new stuff, right? Yeah. Now. New and like super popular stuff. Yeah. Uh, fucking, you're going to have to go to GameStop to get, uh, your, your physical games. And that's kind of a good thing. <laughs> Is it? Cause GameStop sucks. 
it's I think it's better to have a dedicated store for uh certain niche yeah, games. You I know? guess. But I think like at the same time, like you know, most people would either buy their games on Amazon or they download it directly to the console. Yeah. I don't like a lot of what GameStop does. Yeah. I don't like how you go in there and you get a cost to buy their subscriptions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I like having a dedicated store to go to that right. that I know is going to have the niche thing that I want. Right. I wish, you know, record stores were still a thing. And exactly. I wish, like, yeah. GameStop is the modern record store. Yeah. It, it, we we would have projected that GameStop wouldn't exist in like five years. But if these big box retailers keep getting rid of their games or, or making their digital or their physical media smaller and smaller, eventually there's going to be more demand for a place like GameStop. Right. So, uh, I think that I, I'm not too upset about th this news, but I'm also like, when was the last time I bought a fucking DVD? I'm not buying DVDs. Right. I'm not I mean, that guy. But like, you know, it starts with DVDs and then it goes to the games. games. Yeah, yeah. The games are the next. Yeah. yeah. And so. I do like being able to get a physical game every so often, but yeah. Uh, I've, I don't remember the last time I bought a physical game anywhere other than some random place in the city. It is a pain in the <laughs> ass to buy games from tar places like Target because you got to go to the teenager at the kiosk. They got to go over to the case. They got to open the case. They got to get the game. Then you have to buy it in the electronics department. You yeah. can't take it to the register. I'm just not, not like, like shopping around for food and then I'm like, oh wait, I got to pick up Super Mario Wonder. Right. You know, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, I, I did, did do that, that for uh, playing the demo. They had the demo there. Right. And I was like, oh, wait, yeah. I got to play the demo. But like uh, for buying games, that's usually something I have planned out way before. Yeah. You know, it's not like an impulse thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to pick up a game with my groceries. So, I, again, I'm not. I mean, it sucks to see less games out there, but I'm not too right. butthurt about Target getting rid of it. I just hope that uh, they're available in some way to people i just buy my games online yeah if i want a physical one i usually just order on amazon but uh i haven't done that in so long because i haven't wanted a physical one in so long yeah. I've, I've been getting everything on steam but you know if you're a parent and you want to get a, a game for your kid or like a birthday present or whatever target's a place to do it and like they put the games at eye level so that you yeah. can see them this is so, news for uh, other people. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be affected by this at all. Right. But, but if, like, you know, right. if our mother, who loves buying us things we actually want for Christmas, <laughs> wants to buy us a video game, and she's going through the Target, because, you know, our mom always shops at Target, and she says, oh, Willie wanted this game. No, but there's What's this the thing. game again? I, you know, I say that when I used to do gift guides, I don't think I did. I even do one last year. I don't think you did. When I do gift guides, I say in the very beginning, I don't recommend buying games for people. Right. Because people usually know what game they want. I would never want our mother to buy a game <laughs> for us. Because <laughs> she's not going to know right. more than us. And plus, we know what we want already. We're going to have it already. Right. So, I mean, but I understand that there's people who like uh, aren't as into video games as us, and they right. they do need some suggestions. Or like you know, at Christmas, kids usually write a list to Santa, and then they give the. We the were list. very on top of our Christmas. We were, list. yes, yeah. It was a crapshoot whether or not we got anything on yeah. our list, but we were on top of our list. We did a lot yeah. of research for that list. There's some kids who don't know what they want. Right, they just they just want a console, and then they don't know what games. To exactly. Get. So I understand there's a time and a place for. Uh, recommending games to people for a gift guide but mm. i think gift cards way better yeah absolutely and instead of getting gift cards or games it's always like i know you wanted that game but you're an adult and you have a job and a mortgage and a wife and kids so, so i got you the, I got you this gift shirt card. i got you a shirt <laughs> it's two sizes too small but honestly you gotta stop wearing large shirts you gotta start wearing smaller shirts that make your gut like really prominent because that's what's in i'd imagine the opposite conversation no like she always wants me to wear like shirts that are two sizes too small because that's what's fashionable this is why this is why Not I anymore we're on issues. the baggy jeans side of the doomsday clock okay um but now you can't take a gar target gift card 
and buy video games with it. No. That's a... Well, you can buy the physical ones for now. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Will, how would you feel if your mom got you some action figures? Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, that would be the day. That would be that hell would freeze over if that happened. Uh all right. It's time for this part of the show. Backlog! 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 Hey guys, this is backlog time. Look at this. Hey, hey, backlog time. This is a part of the show where we go through our video game collection, every game we've ever bought, or some of them our mom has gotten us. Uh, we put into <laughs> an Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we played it. We're picking game number 814. 814, okay. Got to add some games. Ooh. Uh oh. Spec Ops the line for the Xbox 360. Oh, oh this yes. Is, this is kind of notable. This is, oh, yes, because you can't play it anymore. This is another one of your games. This is, yes. This the, You ranted and raved about this game. This is a game. So, this game came out of like the height of the 360 modern military shooter era. Mm -hmm. This is like after uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out, was like the most popular game. Uh, of that generation, really, and there were a lot of military shooters. Everybody tried to copy it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, EA tried to do it with Medal of Honor and Battlefield. Of uh, Microsoft tried to do it with Halo, even. Uh, so everybody was trying to uh, get a piece of the pie. Um, then in comes 2K Games and this uh, Jaeger Development, who rebooted Spec. The Spec Ops franchise was a budget video game series that on the from the original playstation they were like 20 dollars cheap games i don't remember yeah those. exactly like they were just 20 dollars cheap games you buy like a gas station and like that was it there was there was no like real cultural significance to them when 2k bought the rights to it i guess when they swallowed up the own the owners of the ip they handed it off to jaeger development and they said make us make us a modern military shooter game but what jaeger development did was they didn't just make a good modern military shooter. They made a horrifying deconstruction of the idea of a modern military shooter. So I've always heard about this as having like some wackadoo story, like some it, really nice, really good story. It was it, really heavy on the story. Yeah, it, it is a wackadoo premise because like uh, Dubai gets ravaged by a massive sandstorm and like uh, basically gets destroyed, and you are your uh, Captain Walker uh, and his team go in to try and extradite uh, a lost colonel who's like basically gone mad and taken like taken over the city. Um, but throughout the course of the game, uh, your mission gets uh, more and more harrowing, and you you basically start un unknowingly at first, and then very much knowingly start committing genuine atrocities. <laughs> The things that like in Call of Duty very much like get celebrated, but here like the game actually stops and makes you think about what you've done. It, it gives you repercussions. It gives you repercussions, for the you do, and it yeah. doesn't. And like there are a lot of parts of it where like it's not fun. Like you're not doing this because it's fun. You're doing it to survive. Ammo is surprisingly scarce in this game, so you're constantly like throwing your weapon away, running for cover, finding new weapons to use against your enemies you're not doing this for like you know the fate of the world you're doing this just to survive and get out alive but you know not to spoil the whole thing but there's four different endings and none of them are good endings even the <laughs> endings where you make it out alive you don't make it out alive so, so this is like the last of us before the last of us where yes it makes it's you like do 100 percent you don't yes. want to do or necessarily agree with yeah there's there's the, the the infamous part in the middle of it, which I don't necessarily want to spoil, um, but like you don't know what you're doing. Like you think you're doing what you do in every other modern military shooter, where you're just wiping out enemies, and then you realize you're not doing that, and the game like lingers on it for a very long time. There, yeah, there's and, like a there's like a some it, it plays with uh, PTSD a lot. Plays right? with PTSD a lot. It plays with sanity incredibly well yeah you can't you honest the whole game takes place from walker's perspective but you can't trust him as a narrator because like you don't know what's going on what if he's telling the truth or not 
-hmm. There's a point towards the end of the game where you see a fallen comrade attack you. And then if that comrade kills you and then you have to restart the, the checkpoint, he's gone. So your whole, your whole perception of like what's real and what isn't is always in question. And by the time you get to the end of the game, it's just gone. Like what you thought was the truth is just out the window. So I'm watching this uh, this gameplay from uh, MK Ice and Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, it is only three hours and forty five minutes. It's not a long game. No. I wonder how. Let's let's check the how long. It's it it's not a long game, and you can probably get it done. Like I would say, maybe like five hours. Wow. If you just play through the game, um, but it is well worth the experience. Six hours according yeah. to how long to beat. Because it does it does its best to like make you think you're playing a standard modern military shooter um when in reality it's like seriously trying to make you think of like what that means like what are you what are you actually doing when you play games like this if you were really in this situation would you be considered the hero the answer is no <laughs> so this game's notable right now because it, it's been notable because it was kind of a cult classic it didn't really yeah, do it didn't, too good it didn't sell very well it was kind of the end of the series but people loved uh the idea of the game and the story yes. and whatnot. uh and it's notable right now because it's not available at all it's de it was delisted because it does have like popular uh music in it it has songs from like deep purple and uh other bands of like the 60s because it's very heavily inspired by apocalypse now and the book that's based on heart of darkness um so there's popular music in it and because you know, we can't have nice things. The terms of the contract for licensing that music expired. So rather than relicense it or patch it to have different music, take two, uh, it was just like, you know what? Nobody needs to play this game. I want to play it. I, <laughs> I, I, I've, been, I've heard a lot about it. I just now heard that I could beat it in five hours. Yeah, so now I want to try it. It's on 360. It's available. You could play it um, backwards compatibly on Xbox Series. And oh, Xbox and we One. have it, right? We have it, yes. I highly recommend if you can find this game, play this game. I'm going to pop it into it my is Xbox. Absolutely worthwhile. Uh, I know some people will say that like, the shooting's not good in it. I disagree. I think that's like. It the, looked fine. That's the great trick of it because it makes you think you're playing like a good military shooter it kind of looked exactly like the last of us <laughs> i know and like that that's the great trick because as you as you play it you get into this false sense of security like this is another modern military shooter and it very quickly does not become that the steam page says similar games you might want to play modern warfare 3 and modern warfare 2 and warzone <sighs> it's like going from how do i put this it's like going from uh Saving Private Ryan to a Michael Bay movie. Like you got one is like this really serious, really like genuinely scary portrayal of war. And the other is, you know, hey, isn't it cool that we drove this Humvee through like a dilapidated Cuban uh, village? Yeah, no, I, know? I, I understand. It, this is like an actual like art piece. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. It's like one of the first game. Not that like games never took themselves seriously but this is like the first time where like it actually like thought like you know can we do something with the medium of gameplay this is one of the ones that got brought up uh, a lot in terms of like our games, games art, art yeah. and and uh can you uh have a narrative that has any sort of impact in, in, a, in a video game that's yeah. not just shooting stuff and I, I think one of the best things it did was the main character the player character walker is voiced by nolan north and this was at the time where, the, like, we were, you know, the Uncharted games were popular. We were at peak Nolan North. He was in every video game. He was the protagonist of every video game. You know, and he had that, like, you know, and every character he played was Nathan Drake. He was, like, you know, a wisecracking character or whatnot. And then this game, he fucking unravels. <laughs> it is an Oscar-caliber performance. This is, uh, how, how do I put this? This is... Tom Holland as Don Corleone, but like actually making it work. Uh, in the YouTube chat, Tamago Musubi, delicious, says, uh, shooting is fine. PC gamers complained because it has mouse acceleration. To disable it, you have, you got to decrypt in a, an encrypted config file or something like that. Okay. So you got to do some stuff to get mouse controls to work. Yeah. Or 
plug in a controller. Yes, exactly. It's a it's a console game. Like yeah, it, this was made this, for. I, this was in the era consoles. when like they would put uh, games on PC. They literally just port the console game over and like maybe slap a. They would make the games for console, yeah, and then figure out how to put it on PC. Yeah. Now it's kind of the other way around yeah. because game now consoles are very close to PC yeah. architecture. Back then, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 were very unique, so they had to try to figure out how to get it to work for that before they then moved it over to PC. Yeah. Uh, um, this game has a multiplayer mode. Do not play it. Well, you can't play it because it's you know taken offline. I'm pretty sure the servers are down. But they didn't want to put uh, the multiplayer mode in the game. They wanted this to be a purely single-player experience. But Take-Two said, no, it's a military shooter. You got to have a multiplayer mode. Put a multiplayer mode in it. And that actually impacted the single player development of the game because they had to pull resources and funding from the single player campaign into this half-baked dumbass multiplayer mode that nobody liked nobody ever played and was you know derived for being inessential and that's probably why the game is as short as it is. yeah uh okay so i'm gonna have to uh grab that and try it on yes. my xbox you will 100 percent have to play it and if you have access to this game definitely play this game it's very rare for me to want to play a game that i haven't played that we feature on the backlog yeah last week we talked about sonic 4 yes and that made me replay sonic 4 that game sucks <laughs> I, we were like this game wasn't as bad as everybody said no that game sucks it controls horribly is it it's the, it's the physics right the physics are yeah. terrible in that game but my question is does it suck Yes, the well, answer is yes, but go on. <laughs> did, did the perception change over time? Like, was it a good game? Because the question was, like, was it a good game back then and it's just a bad game now? Or was it always a bad game? So the reason why we liked it or or were more okay with it than other people is, ex is something we mentioned in the Backlog episode. Right. It's because we were so starved for 2D Sonic. Right. We were uh, accepting of it. It wasn't great, but it's like, we don't have any 2D Sonic, so this is the best we're gonna yeah. get. It, uh, Sonic Superstars feels better than, than this game. Okay. So it's not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't say it's good for even a game back then. It is just not a good, it's Got it. not good. Got and it. I, I didn't even play it for that long. I played it for like two yeah. seconds, but I was like this, I can't. We've come so far with with, <laughs> with 2D games. I can't mm -hmm. play this any longer. And then I I played uh, Sonic Four Episode Two. Yeah, and it feels exactly the same, same. thing. Yeah, okay. you just have tails like abilities, right? Like, okay. Pick you up and stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the backlog. There I'm gonna go. try Spec Ops. And see how it is. Thanks for coming in the backlog, guys. Uh. Come to a podcast sometime. We're going to continue the podcast, but if you're watching this afterwards, only the backlog version. Bye. Bye. Uh, the Spec Ops line have split screen. Uh, like in terms like of co-op? Co no. I don't think so. No. It's a, it's a single player experience. Uh, I just, I did want to look because I do have it in Steam. So I wonder if like it's part of like the oh. shared library. That I gotta see. Well, I mean, check check your Steam library to see if you have it. Because uh, it would be in your thing. I don't think it will tell me on Mac because it's not. Ma oh wait, no, I'm looking at it right now. I'm Steam family. These are all the games I got from you. Right. Does, does Spec Ops show up on your? It'll. Uh, where is it? Because I, th for me, it said it's not compatible with with this. It didn't even like. Right, but it should still be in my library. Because I could break out the Steam Deck. Yeah. It yeah, it's that. it's showing up. Spec Ops the line. Hold on, I'm opening Steam proper. Your current Mac version is unable to run 32-bit games. This game may not run. Oh, so I could try to get it on here. Please wait while we try to see if Bob can play Spec Ops the it's line not on even Steam. Here, go to your library. library. On the side panel, there should be, um, what's it called? Steam Family. Oh. 
over here, I have a category that says Steam Family. Oh, I, I think I have to, like, enable something. Okay. On my... There's, like, a thing. You have to, like, do the family beta. Right. I mean, because I see your games here. Family management? Oh, yeah, I have. I, um, I got the family beta. All right. Yeah, Alpha Protocol. I know you don't have Alpha Protocol. Oh. Okay, so why don't I just go down to S for Spec Ops? There it is. Install. There, there you go. go. It's as simple as that. I'm going to get it on my Steam Deck. Should should work on Steam. It should work. Uh, good news. Good news. I mean, if, it, if it doesn't if it works on this. Yeah. If it doesn't work, just, you know, 360 version. Yeah, that should yeah. be. But I'd, I'd rather have it on my Steam Right, right. Oh, of course. Um, search. I searched for it. I didn't. I couldn't find it that way for some reason. Anyway, uh, new news around Embracer Group. Everybody, everybody's yes. favorite group. That Let me just, just reopen all my fucking Chrome tabs. Everyone knows Embracer Group. It's the big holding company that bought up a bunch of game companies because they were like, gaming is a booming. Hundreds of billions of dollars in this industry. Let's invest in it. And yeah. they bought up game companies. <laughs> and then the games industry crumbled hard mm -hmm. because these fucking idiots don't even don't take into account real world situations. They yes. just saw COVID and was like, everybody's buying media. Oh, 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 We're gonna invest in the media because the media's doing good. They didn't realize that fucking everybody was gonna stop investing in it because it was only happening because everybody was staying home. They don't yes. look at the real world implications of things, they don't look at the numbers. Uh, it's like they're computers. They're not real people looking at the numbers. And then they lost all their money, so they started firing everybody and 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 canceling projects. And now, uh, Embracer Group has announced it its intent to split up into three separate companies. The, are, that, that all have the best names. They, these are really terrible names. Um, Asmodi, the Asmodi Group, Coffee Stain, and Friends. And Middle Earth Enterprises and friends. Who? What does Coffee Stain do? Uh, we'll find out in the, in the article. Okay. Uh, each company will be a separate, publicly listed company. Embracer said the move comes after a brutal period of restructuring that has seen hundreds of staff lose their job, a multiple studio shut down, and the sale of developers, including Borderlands maker Gearbox and Knights of the Old Republic remake maker Saber Interactive. Um, the largest shareholder, controversial CEO Lars uh, Wingafort. Don't care how to pronounce his name. He sucks. Intends to <laughs> form a new long-term ownership structure and will re uh, will remain a long-term active and committed uh, su and supportive owner of all three entities. Great. Um, <laughs> here's the breakdown. As Modi is a tabletop games publisher, Coffee Stain and Friends will focus on indie and A slash double A premium and free to play games for PC, console, and mobile. And Middle Earth Enterprises and friends uh, will focus on AAA game development and publishing for PC and consoles, as well as the stewardship of the Lord of the Rings and Tomb Raider intellectual properties. Uh, digging into the details, Asmodi uh, has over 300 owned IPs, including board games, uh, Ticket to Ride, Seven Wonders, Azul, Catan, uh, Dabo, and Exploding Kittens. Asmodi is currently developing licensed tabletop games based on Lord of the Rings, Marvel, uh, Game of Thrones, Netflix, Lego, and Star Wars, including the recently released training card game Star Wars Unlimited. Coffee Stain and Friends includes Coffee Stain, Ghost Ship, uh, Tarsier, Tuxedo Labs, as well as THQ Nordic and Amplifier Games Invest. These are the games that uh, Coffee Stain does. Goat yes. Simulator, Valheim. Deep Rock Galactic, uh, Deep, Deep Rock Galactic, uh, Wreckfest, Teardown, uh, f yeah, several others. So so this is all just a uh, ploy. This, this is some sort of... Uh, invest this is some sort of stock market wheeling and dealing yes this is uh we've heard of companies splitting their share prices before like yeah. like uh making it so shares 
costs like a fraction of what they they I don't know they do some fucking thing to make it seem yeah. like there's more shares in the in the market than there are. Uh, th- what they're doing is splitting their company into three separate companies while still like being one company no i think that there's three different it's three different companies still overseen by the same guy but i i think that the the stock market sees it as three companies now is is Mm -hmm. the thing and that means if you hold stock in embracer group now you own stock in three companies that all cost the same but to, to, to something there's something about it that is some sort of market tomfoolery. Yeah. Uh that's the reason that they're that they're doing it. It's yeah. uh it's a, uh, it's just fucking embracer group being stupid again. Yeah. And having having no like uh regard for anybody else but the 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 numbers on the paper. Yeah. Uh and finally, Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends will focus on Lord of the Rings and other key IP owned studios include Crystal Dynamics. Dam Buster Studios, Idos Montreal, Flying uh, Flying Wild Hog Studios, Tripwire, Vertical Games, Warhorse Studios, and 4A Games. IPs include Dead Island, Killing Floor, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Lord of the Rings, Metro, Tomb Raider, along with many others. This group will also include publisher Play On, Free Mode, and Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Sir Griffax says there needs to be a holding company then. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Embracer Group is a holding company. Right. And they dropped three companies. <laughs> they're, not old, they're not doing a good job yeah. holding them. Anyway. So there uh, you go. So that, I don't know what impact this is going to have on the actual companies. Uh, <sighs> I just know that uh, we don't like them. And they've done nothing but bad decisions. So there far. was an interview like recently about this. And like uh, Lars uh, Wings for said something that's along the lines of yeah i probably deserve blame for a lot of what's going on and you're like no shit sherlock <laughs> oh god uh brb starting a company called re embracer group and buying the three companies they just made yeah i'm yeah, sure oh, you have the money i'm sure i deserve a lot of criticism that's what he said yeah look it's probably not easy running a big company right but there's got to be some wiggle room. It yeah. feels to me, being out the, an outside observer, it feels to me the people who run these big companies don't know anything about video games. Right. And the IPs that they have. <sighs> a lot of... <sighs> There's got to be a lot of hardships that I don't understand because that's a lot of money that you're just sloshing around and a lot of people that you're, right. that you're working with. But you, they, they just seem out of touch in ways that don't make sense. At a certain point, though, if you're a big enough company, you have people who can like help you with like yeah. all the minutia and everything. Like you have money, people. You have creative people. Yeah. You have like day to day people. Like you have all these people working for you. You just make the final decision on yeah. everything. So all you have to do is say, "No, we're not going to keep buying game companies." No, we're not going to like start hemorrhaging money. Yes, we're going to make the Time Splitters remakes and put them out there and do Time Splitters 4 properly. Yes, we're going to do a good Tomb Raider game. No, this was this whole company exists to make more money. There's yeah. no they, they don't exist to, to make good products. They right. exist to make as much money as possible with as little they they exist to put as little money into it and get as much money out of mm-hmm. it. Um and uh, that does not create a good product. No. That ruins products. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of big money sloshing companies, uh, Meta opens up Quest's OS for yes. third-party hardware. Meta announced some changes to its virtual reality business to make it more open ecosystem for developers and users. First, the company said it will make the operating system behind the Meta Quest headsets, Meta Horizon OS, available to other companies to create third-party hardware. It already has a handful of partners on board to make headsets with Asus Republic of Gamers creating an all new performance gaming headset while Lenovo designs one optimized for productivity and entertainment. Uh, Meta also uh, said it will create a limited edition MetaQuest headset inspired by Xbox and Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg suggested suggested in an Instagram post that one could make a VR headset bundled with an Xbox controller and Game Pass so players uh, could play on virtual big screens and TVs um, wherever they happen to be. Mark Zuckerberg jump scare over here. I didn't know it was a real. Our goal is to make it uh, so 
our goal is to make it so the open model defines the next generation of, compu of computing again with the metaverse, glasses, and headsets, Zuckerberg said. Um, that's why we're releasing our operating system so that more companies can build different things on it. In keeping with the op in keeping with the opening up of the hardware, Meta is renaming the MetaQuest store as the Meta Horizon store. Um, it is also integrating the primary Meta Horizon store with the App Lab, uh, which to this point has been a separate store for experimental or still in development games. Going forward, App Lab titles will be featured in their own section of the main storefront. Meta is also opening the Quest uh, more on the, on the software side of things, saying it will make it possible for Quest owners to play content from other storefronts like oh. Steam, Xbox, and potentially Google Play. That's huge. Steam and Xbox games have already been playable on the Quest VR headsets through cloud game, Xbox Cloud Gaming and Steam Link, respectively. As for Google Play, Meta said it, it is encouraging Google to make its store accessible via the Quest, adding that Google Play, uh, Google Play would be allowed to run with the same economic model it does on other platforms. What I would like to see is the opposite. I want to see Quest games being run on other platforms. Yeah. Because uh, there's that game, uh, was it Population One? What's the game? It's the Battle Royale shooter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's the game that's Quest exclusive, and it would be nice to see that uh, on a different platform so that I could play it with the other people on different, yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, opening it up is great. This I is mean, probably what it should have been in the first place. Just an open standard that like gets licensed out to like other companies to I work think with. Right now, that's the only way for VR to grow is to yeah. uh, have it as open as possible so everybody can develop on it and, mm -hmm. and get it into as many hands as possible. Yeah. Um, that's what's hindering it a lot right now is because it's splintered between like three different companies yeah. and they're all doing uh, different things and everything's locked to it. Uh, having Asus work on one is interesting. I, I'd imagine that that'd be something that I would uh, be able to get my hands on. Uh, Lenovo working on a productivity one. I don't. I still have no idea why I would ever want to put on a VR headset to go to work instead of just. They're really pushing that. Like yeah. that's the whole point of the vision. Doesn't make any Pro. fucking sense to me. Like Unless I, I put it on a pair of glasses. Like I yeah. understand that. But putting on a whole ad, like strapping in to go to yeah. work sounds dumb. Yeah. For, like, for I don't, somebody who's going to look at a screen. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand like why they think that's going to take off. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. But for games, yes, I completely understand. Mm -hmm. uh, g g making it able so that I could uh, play like, uh, I still haven't played Half-Life Alex, And most yeah. of the barrier there is because I just don't want to fucking strap in, you yeah. know? Yeah. And lowering that barrier, maybe I'll play it sometime. Yeah. Same thing with Population One. I want to play that game, but mm -hmm. I don't want to have to do a whole thing. So right. if I could minimize the do a whole thing, then maybe I'll play it. All right. Uh, next up, Nintendo has no. Has, uh, Nintendo said, "Samus, you can't be in Fortnite." Nope. We don't want Samus shooting Goku. Uh, former Epic Games Chief Creative Officer Donald Mustard has explained why Fortnite was never able to add a Nintendo representative like Samus Aran as a playable character. Fortnite has raged on as the biggest crossover title in pop culture for nearly seven years, Jesus. And thanks, Jesus to, thanks to the long list of characters from across movies, TV, and games that it features, with PlayStation and Xbox mascots like Kratos and, and Master Chief already available as playable characters, many fans expected one day to see Nintendo characters join the fray. When documents revealed that Epic had once considered the possibility of including Samus, uh, excitement grew even more however muster said the chances of the sci-fi bounty hunter appearing in fortnite are currently pretty slim he opened up about some behind the scenes talks in epic uh behind the scenes talks at epic during an interview with steven Tatillo's game file saying nintendo wasn't interested in seeing the character appear on other consoles they got really hung up on their characters showing up on other platforms that weren't their platforms mustard explained fortnite is available on nearly every gaming uh, game playing device players can get their hands on when mario appeared uh where mario to appear in fortnite on switch he would also need to appear on playstation xbox and even mobile platforms too they would be thrilled to have nintendo characters in fortnite but just only if it's on their platform mustard continued epic could theoretically release samus as a switch exclusive character but mustard said the company isn't interested in walling off content from other players for me and for all of epic we're like 
This That is an absolute must. We want to make sure that Fortnite is the same experience no matter what screen or device you're playing on, he said. I actually appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that they don't want to wall off a, a piece of content just so that uh, uh, they can involve Nintendo in yeah. some way. No, I 100% I agree. Nintendo's strategy has been uh, seen previous crossovers before. Rocket League, a game that is also available on a wide variety of platforms, uh, received Mario, Luigi, and even Metroid-themed vehicles in 2017. However, those cars are Switch exclusive, meaning that those who play on different consoles cannot access the content. Epic would go on to buy Rocket League developer Psyonix in 2019. But won't you see the Mario car if you're playing crossplay with somebody else? I don't know. Does it just default to a regular it car? It might just default to a regular I car. I thought you could still see it on the platform. I don't you know. You can't play as it. Because I was, I was going to bring up yeah. Psyonix because they, they did it. They have exclusive stuff, but I, it's a car. It's not a whole character. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a car themed like a character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I could understand why Nintendo wouldn't want to do it, and I can understand why Epic wouldn't want to work with them. Yeah. So, uh, I, mean, that, hope, I mean, hopefully, you know, Nintendo changes their tune. Like, they change their tune about cross-play online gaming. You know, that's a big deal. Nintendo changed their mind about that before Sony did. Yeah, that's that. Well, yeah. they kind of, they kind of had to. They were, they were they were not doing too hot. I guess now it's, these days, if 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 that same conversation was happening now, I don't know if they would they would play ball. Yeah. Um. Okay. It does. I tested it. What it defaults or it plays? What does that mean? Yeah. What uh, you tested? Explain it yourself, what? Mud Noodle. Mud Noodle. You explain yourself right now. Uh, now, this next article we have, you wrote Dad Furious at Nintendo after Animal Crossing service closed, and you put Dad in quotes. Yes, because it's clearly <laughs> Jeff Gertzman, world-renowned, <laughs> very famous gaming journalist, Jeff Gertzman. There he is. He's not just a dad. He's somebody that gamers <laughs> know and are aware of. Yes. He created Giant Bomb, for fuck's sake. Mud Noodle said it defaults to just a regular car. Okay. Okay. That sucks. Yes. Anyway, Anywho, here's Jeff Gertzman. American video game journalist and Twitch streamer Jeff Gertzman shared that his three-year-old daughter was left devastated huh. after finding out Nintendo had discontinued its online game features in Animal Crossing New Leaf. This is something Nintendo has done across all of their games on both the 3DS and the Wii U. And while titles on these consoles are still playable, many of them are now missing elements that were essential parts of the gameplay experience. Gertzman shared that his daughter was confused by Nintendo shutting down the Animal Crossing New Leaf servers and making the Dream Suite unusable. For those unfamiliar, the Dream Suite lets players explore other people's towns uh, to see what they've created. Animal Crossing is all about making your own little villages uh, and seeing other player creations is something Gertzman's daughter seemed to enjoy. Uh, but it's also a feature that she now has no way to access. He explained that his daughter wasn't able to uh, wasn't able to read yet, so that he so she had to enlist his help. Uh, when she encountered a message preventing her from dreaming. Um, <laughs> that, that's so yeah. dystopian. Uh, on the bottom of the screen is an error message that says the service has been concluded. Thank you for your understanding, Gertzman recounted. This forced him to explain to his daughter that the dream suite had been permanently removed and that she would be unable to use it. Basically, I told her that she wasn't going to be able to uh, do that anymore and she burst into fucking tears. And I'm like, God damn shit, fucking Nintendo, Gersman said. This wasn't a one-off ordeal either. His daughter was still affected by it hours later. At, se- at about 7 o'clock or so, she starts crying, like a lot, uh, he recalled. I'm thinking, oh, she's going to... Th- uh, she has to go to the bathroom. Maybe she ne- needs something. I just remembered about the dreams again. And I was like, fuck, I'm so pissed at Nintendo <laughs> uh, in that moment. Somebody's got to get this guy set up with Pretendo. Yes. Does Pretendo work uh, with Animal Crossing? It must. Progress. Let's see. Uh, this nav. It's very brave of him to let his three-year-old play video games. My daughter is four, and if I have introduced her to video games, I'm never going to see her again. Like, you can't pry that girl away from a screen. That's the future. Yeah, I know. That was us. Right. I, I saw a meme the other day that was uh, it, it was a picture. Remember how uh, people used to have, and we had this in our house. It's just like 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 a like a where the computer is it's like a like a like, like this like big armoire yeah. thing that you put the computer in it's like it, it the the meme was the internet used to be a location that you go to yeah you go to the internet yeah you go to the desk where the internet is and then you leave and you walk away yeah 
I didn't walk away. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just lived at the internet. I lived where that right. big box was. Now I have it on my phone, so now I can leave. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, that is a long way to say you're never gonna see her again. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see uh, Animal Crossing here at all. I'm sure after this they'll add it, or like they'll try to make it work. It'll be a lot. Yeah. I, I honestly, I completely forgot about that. I'm surprised that people are still playing New Leaf. Uh, there is the Switch version, and you could do all that in the Switch version, right? But I mean, like you know, they spent however many years in the in the 3DS version. He probably didn't want to get her a Switch. He probably just gave her a hand me down system. Now That's she can't true. use it anymore. Yeah, for whatever reason, yeah, they they, they don't want to start a new island or whatever. Yeah. Well, that so, sucks. Can't yeah. get Pretendo. Fuck Nintendo once again. <laughs> uh, Ghost of Tsushima PC specs and info. Let's plow through the rest of this. We're okay. Uh, so yeah, we got new information on the upcoming Ghost of Tsushima PC port. Uh, the big thing about it, it is the first PlayStation had on PC that uses the PlayStation overlay, uh, which includes your friends list, trophy settings, and your profile. The feature is available on Windows PCs and will be accessible uh, from the in-game menus or for keyboard players by pressing Shift and F1 uh, on the keyboard and it basically it brings up the playstation menu this is awesome yes i want so badly for this to do uh cross save yes that would be insane and i kind of hope this gets uh retroactively added to like the other playstation games mm -hmm. that are on pc because like i think this is like this should have been there from the start like when spider-man came to pc this should have been part of it i don't know how trophies work because then they would have to like you know look at your save file and yeah. then see what trophies you deserve but uh i don't, I don't know uh to make use of features like trophies friends list and cross play you could sign in with your existing account on playstation networks or create a new one the use of playstation overlay is optional for both the single player experience and the legends multiplayer mode um and then uh also on the list we have the pc specs uh this is what you need to play the game on pc where's the Okay, so very low. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's reasonable. Nine sixty. You can run this on fucking anything. Yeah, nine sixty is what I had in my computer, like ten years ago. <laughs> like, like you're you're gonna run this thing on anything. Yeah, uh, but that's only seven twenty p thirty frames. But I yeah. mean, whatever. Take what you can get. Um, this is great. That, yeah. This is a one step further to the the great uh, homogenization of console and PC, which yeah. I think is a good thing. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think, I, I if think you asked me four years ago, I would have said, no, keep consoles separate. Yeah. But now I got my Steam Deck, baby. I think there's still, I mean, this was like years ago, like people were thinking about this and it died down. But I think there's still like that, that hope for like one day we'll just have like the one platform future. Because like Blu-rays and like music CDs and stuff, you buy one and you can put it in anything and it mm -hmm. works. Video games, it's still like you buy it on PlayStation, you can only play it on PlayStation. I feel like we're we're one day we will get to the point where you buy a game once and you play it on everything. You can play it on everything in the house. You know? I think we're getting very close to we're that. getting closer than we have. Like, yeah. especially because like now that everything's digital, it's more like, you know, I can have Netflix on my phone or on my TV or you know, on my tablet. I want to be able to take my experience wherever I want. Yes. To. And uh, we're getting closer to that with this. Yes. Uh, right now, the experience that I have is usually I just put it on Steam and then it goes to all my different devices mm -hmm. and I'm able to do whatever I want with it. Um, and Sony playing well with PC stuff and Steam is it is, yeah. is, is very is, is a very unlike Sony, but uh has been very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, speaking of Sony, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Reportedly underperforming commercially, according to Daniel Ahmed, the director of research uh, inside at Nico Partners. Square is really weird, and they uh, drastically, like, uh, they set their goals, their bars really high. They do. Yeah. Uh, it's, this game was a huge phenomenon, so the fact that it underperformed is baffling. Yeah. Uh, it's selling about half of what remake the first game uh, sold in the same time frame and looks like uh, it will have a weaker tail prior to any PS plus like re-release 
um ahmed added final fantasy 7 remake uh was released on the playstation 4 in april 2020 when the console had an install base of over 100 million units shipments of the game topped 3.5 million in the first three days uh according to publisher square enix which hasn't which hasn't announced a rebirth sales data yet in comparison rebirth was released a few months after the playstation 5 hit 50 million sales units um yeah i think the context is different final fan uh rebirth came out on the playstation 4 which had 100 million units sold so more people had it more people were able to buy the game and play it rebirth not only cost ten dollars more but it's now on a system that has half of the install base so half of the amount of people are able to access it on top of the fact that you know remake came out during the pandemic so everybody was home playing video games rebirth came out not in the pandemic everyone's out living their lives again of uh, yeah it's it's different circumstances you can't expect also too i think people when people buy final fantasy 7 remake they expect to get final fantasy 7 yeah. remade i was gonna say i mean the big issue is that the install base isn't as big but the yeah. second one is that this is confusing it's a yes. very confusing game yes. and it's not a it's not a straight remake yeah, well, this is Rebirth. So, like, I don't know what I can do. Like, yeah. everybody's talking about how great this game is. Do I need to, like, it sounds like it does some stuff from the first game. Yeah. So, but do like, I need to play the first game? Yes! <laughs> and technically, you need to play the original Final Fantasy VII because there's, like, metatextual commentary on the original Final Fantasy yeah, VII. Yeah, so, so it's your own fault Square. yeah it's your own fault that this happened and there's, but also you shouldn't have set the bar so high and, it's doing fine and like there's still one more game yeah <laughs> there's another part of this remake trilogy at least yeah one more game yeah so i don't know like it's it's ridiculous it, it's it's very much ridiculous Plowing through, we got Little Big Planet. Server Apocalypse wipes hundreds of thousands of PlayStation players' creations without warning. What the fuck? Yeah, Sony has indefinitely decommissioned the PlayStation 4 servers for Little Big Planet. The company announced in an update to one of its uh, support pages the permanent shutdown. Little comes Big Planet Three. Yes. Okay. Uh, the shutdown comes just months after the servers were temporarily taken offline due to ongoing issues. Fans now fear potentially hundreds of thousands of player creations are not saved locally will be lost forever. Uh, due to ongoing technical issues, uh, which resulted in Little Big Planet 3 servers for PlayStation 4 being taken offline temporarily in January 2024, the decision has been made to keep the servers offline indefinitely. That's fucked. All online services, include, uh, including access to other player creations, Little Play Big Planet 3 will no longer be available. That sucks so bad. Little Big Planet 3 had a lot of like server issues, including like uh, bots and spamming that like. Yeah, so this is like Little Big Planet was Mario Maker before Mario Maker. And, yeah. And uh, they had a lot less regulation and stuff. Yeah. Like you could get away with a lot. And there was a lot of like levels that broke the game and shit. Yeah. Uh, and they, uh, I don't want to say they welcomed it, but they weren't very uh, uh, on top of things. Yeah. Uh, so it was ripe with issues. And uh, here we are with. Uh, the biggest issue of all, shutting the whole fucking thing down without saying anything. Yeah, I, I saw somewhere like uh, Nintendo at least warned you three years in advance that they were shutting <laughs> yeah, down Mario Maker. They gave you Maker. like a long yeah. time. So that just sucks. And like Little Big Planet, like those are great games. Like those are really fun games. And like Sony hasn't done anything. Like they, they did a Sackboy game, but they haven't done Little Big Planet. Mm -hmm. And they're basically saying like, oh, we don't want to work on this. Anymore. It's terrible. And if we had those sort of regulations like we were talking about a few episodes ago with the uh the crew mm -hmm. I remember the guy was mm -hmm. made this video about how the crew yeah, is shut down killing games or whatever it's called yeah. yeah and if they're gonna kill a game they should let all of the resources be available for people to uh then make it a community driven effort, effort yeah it wouldn't be a problem if sony was like here's everyone's levels somebody take it yeah <laughs> and do do something <laughs> do something with this um then somebody could uh do some sort of homebrew and let it live on somehow but yeah. uh if or, or have private servers or something uh but you're just fucking shutting everything down without warning and that should be you should be a, a company should be reprimanded for that because yeah. people are buying this game expecting it to work for a certain amount of time and then it just fucking doesn't all of a sudden yeah with no warning whatsoever 
imagine if your KitchenAid mixer just stopped working one yeah. day for no reason. It's the comp the company decided to pull the plug. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Eurogamer. This says Ubisoft leaker includes image of Killian Murphy. Yeah, so initially this leaker, uh, Jonathan, who successfully leaked Ubisoft details before, including uh, accurate reports of Assassin's Creed Mirage ahead of release, posted this tweet. Uh, it's in French, but translated said, if nothing changes by then, and it's a picture of Killian Murphy, uh, a bomb uh, with a timer on it, it's a 72, a crab, and the number seven. And uh, A big crab, that's a big crab. It's a big crab. It was posted to a Gamer Leaks and Rumors subreddit. Um, and it's implied that it's going to be, it's related to Far Cry 7. Uh, and then he later come out and said, uh, attention, I never said Killian Murphy was going to be in the game. The image means something else. And why did you specifically <laughs> put Killian Murphy in the tweet? I think people think that it means Far Cry 7 is going to be in Ireland or something. That could be interesting. Then put the Irish flag. <laughs> Far Cry is a franchise that has used famous people as their antagonists before. Yeah. Uh, most notably Giancarlo Esposito and Michael Mondo, both of the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul universe. So, I mean, I doubt they're, they're going to get recent Academy Award nominee, uh, Academy Award winner, sorry, Killian Murphy to be in the game, but... You never know. He does play video games. In the in the behind the scenes documentary for the Batman Begins video game, he's like, "Oh, I'm a big gamer." You see him playing the game with the oh blurred God. out PS2 controller. I wonder if the 72 hours means that it's gonna be timed like the game, like oh, like a Majora's Mask, like a Majora's deal? Mask thing. I want that. I want more games like that where they that give you a time limit to, yeah. to to do the thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't. I. It's Ubisoft, so I, I know. Like, I'm kind of burnt down on Far Cry. Like I liked Far Cry a lot, yeah. and then they released the same game six times. I've been like five interests me because I'm intrigued by the story, but like, I'm not gonna go out of my way to play it. Is five the American one? Yeah, yeah, I played it, and it's as fucking same yeah. as four, which is the same as three. And like I've I've actually heard the new Avatar game is the best Far Cry they've released in years. <laughs> okay, which is saying something. But like I feel like when it's See, I don't know, because like I said, I was gonna, I was gonna say I'm gonna save myself for Star Wars Outlaws, because that'll be like the first Ubisoft game I've played in years. But that's that's shaping up to be a great, yeah, a great game. And I'm probably gonna wait until that's on super duper sale. <laughs> so never mind. Uh, more Ubisoft hate. Uh, they're killing Watch Dogs. I yeah. liked Watch Dogs. Yeah. Well, the first one. I've heard the second one is better. Okay. But again, it's a Ubisoft game, so like. Didn't want to play it. I liked Watch Dogs because I liked Assassin's Creed and I liked the Desmond story and I was the only one who did. Right. And I wanted so badly for Assassin's Creed to be in the modern era. Right. And then that's what Watch Dogs was. And then they fucking did some weird shit with Watch Dogs. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's Jonathan again. He revealed how the series is seemingly done. Uh, Legion's commercial failure brought the cancellation of multiple projects in the series, according to the leaker, including a fairy, fairly original Battle Royale project. Uh, so yeah, there's no official word on it. I even hesitated to put this in the in the keep, but you know, I I think it's worth uh, pointing out that like, you know, we haven't really heard anything about Watch Dogs since Legion, and like they haven't really like reported on anything new or like anything upcoming. Ubisoft doesn't have any battle royale stuff. They no. had a hyperscape, which was pretty bad, and right. I think that that's not really a thing anymore. Um, they did just. I think they released X Defiant or something. It's their Call of Duty clone. It looks okay. exactly like multiplayer Call of Duty. Right. Um, people seem to like it, but it literally just looks exactly like Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, 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 they got, they got me with their Prince of Persia games. It's about it. Right. It's about all I, I, I could uh, say about Ubisoft. Okay. All right. And we did all the news. Yeah. So now we do this. Print of the week. Print of the week. Print of the week. You put this one here. I put this one in there. Uh, I have seen this one. Now, the quote tweet. No, we're not reading the quote tweet. All right, just, just do it. Oh, oh, you, we, it's it's an audio thing. Yes. This is... We're not set up for audio. Hold on a second. All right. I got to do all Should thing. I set up context for the audio listeners or... Uh, it Yeah, it is. Yeah, all go right. ahead. All right. So, for those of you who don't keep up on Twitter uh, very often, the, recently they've been making the rounds is people have been taking uh, the classic Looney Tunes character of Foghorn Leghorn and just... Not only just photoshopping him into anime, but having him uh, yell at anime characters over the, the decisions they make. And uh, Eric Bowser, who uh, voices several Looney Tune characters, including Foghorn Leghorn, decided to take uh -oh. it upon himself 
and read some of these tweets. Boy, I say boy, the final flash ain't nothing more than a flash in the pan, boy. You missed it. Who right over me? You couldn't hit the broad side of a barn with a blast like that, boy. <laughs> no wonder you called to stay in. All talking, nothing else. Now pay attention when I'm talking to you. <laughs> this, this, that is, uh... <laughs> Vegeta on the ground and Foghorn yes, Leghorn yeah. yelling over him. Uh, I love very, these. These very, are great. This is these, this is a good Twitter meme. You know it's a shitty Twitter meme? The look between the... Yes! I don't get it. Is it supposed to be like, your keyboard's gross? Is that what it I is? I don't know. I don't know. Whoever came up with it, I hope, gets arrested. I saw a look between the H and the L, and it says JK. And yeah. Like, that's... Okay, I I've understand seen that. Like, but I've seen A and S, and that doesn't make any sense. I've seen look between Z and P on your keyboard. That's the whole keyboard. Exactly. I saw one that was looked between the A and the L, and then it was a picture of a keyboard, and it said "fuck you" across it. And that makes sense. <laughs> that was that's funny. Yeah, uh, but I don't. Uh, that's another. I don't. I don't yeah. fucking get it. Anyway, we're gonna talk to you, people. Real yes. Quick. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Podcast. Oh, yeah, baby. We got uh, Caleb Fox, who says, I love listening to Old Wolf Den Live slash podcast because they provide so much context for everything. It's surprising how relatively little things have changed. <laughs> oh, God. But I wish LKM Cherokee <laughs> still watched the show. I wonder what happened to that guy. I hope he's good. Uh, yeah. He I... used to comment every week and ask Will what comics he's reading. <laughs> well, I would. he would like ask me what comics I'm reading, not even comics I was reading. And so, like, I would have him, like, DM me on Twitter, like, what comics do you want me to talk about? And, he, like, I would have to, like, speed read them for the show. He, so, like, he literally gave you homework. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Rand says, uh, regarding watching the old podcast, Bob mentioned one reason for watching them is hearing old thoughts on things that have come to pass. And I totally agree with that. Fucking hilarious and heartbreaking to hear past Bob and Will talk about anticipated games that absolutely blew like division two. <laughs> I, that is one of my mo biggest disappointments. Yeah. Um, Actually, Division 1, I think, was my biggest disappointment. Also worrying that Xbox would name their next console the 720 and one f and 1440. Wish they would have. Yeah, that's yeah they yeah, named it they something. Could, could you have imagined a worse name than Xbox One? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm sorry. A worse name than Xbox 720. Yeah, Xbox One. <laughs> I couldn't have imagined yeah. that they would do that. Eric, it's still pissing me off. You guys keep saying Arkham Asylum should work on the Steam Deck. Steam tells you it's not supported, brothers. Should it have bricked your deck? No, but like, come on, let's be real. No, it worked. I got it working. It worked perfectly fine. And then for some reason, it decided to crap itself at the very last thing I was able to do in the game. I think he, he's saying like, it's not like, it says it's not deck compatible. It, sa it says unsupported, but... I think like Arkham City is listed as playable, and it's the same shit. It like has a launcher screen. Mm -hmm. You launch it from there, and then it boots into the game proper you just know, fine. You know how Steam Deck works. You fucking just try to figure it out. Yeah, you know, it's like a roll of the dice. Yeah, and a game like that should have no problem yeah. running on Steam Deck. Sensual Silence says switch to next year for sure, especially with Pokemon Legends ZA coming out next year. They have to have a big ticket game that people will buy at launch or close to it to ensure they are going to have sales. That big ticket game better not be Pokemon. Yeah. They I would be shocked if Nintendo would put their all put their launch stock in a Pokemon game, especially yeah. after how good Zelda did for them. And how terrible the last Pokemon game was. Yeah. Because Nintendo, I mean, it sold a lot, but Nintendo knows that it did. It was not performing well uh, uh, on the console itself, and is a bad look for Nintendo. Yeah. So having the whole, yeah, that cannot be a killer app. A killer app cannot be a Pokemon game. Mm -hmm. Ooms of dooms says in the same vein as buying a game and being caught off guard with companies asking for more money. What happened to good pre-order bonuses? If I'm spending full price for a day one game, why don't we get cool crap anymore? That's a good point. Uh, feel like Europe gets cool stuff, but what about us American boys? 
Like, take a look at Europe versus U.S. for Paper Mario and Luigi's Mansion 2 for Switch. I'm kind of glad they don't do pre-order bonuses anymore. Because it was like, it became punishment for everyone else. Like, you pre-order the game at GameStop, they give you an exclusive in-game item that, like, you didn't get if you didn't pre-order the game. Or even worse, I think it was Transformers War for Cybertron. Depending on where you pre-order, you got a different Transformer to use in multiplayer. Yeah, so people pre-ordered it everywhere. Yeah. So that sucked. Yeah. That was around the time when the companies were trying to find ways to make you buy the game new and not use it. Mm -hmm. Um, I miss the physical pre-order bonuses. Yeah. Like you get like a... I think Mario Maker had it, so you got a stylus for mm-hmm. your uh, for your Wii U or something. Yeah, um, just little trinkets. Yeah, like like a, a Splinter Cell Conviction gave you a little USB drive thing that was cool. Yeah. Like like shit like that. Like I'd, yeah, I, yeah. I want that sort of physical pre order bonus. Then I then I would definitely buy more physical games. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, all right. Now we're now we're in the chat. With yes, you. Uh, we have um, comments. Oh. Yeah. We yeah we have uh, Mackenzie with the twenty two months. I missed like the whole show, but I need to know what the Wolf Bros and Hannah think about the tortured poets department. Oh, that's a Hannah thing. <laughs> that is uh, Hannah. I asked her about it. She says it's, it, the feelings are mixed on it. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know what her public uh 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 what would you call it uh, uh statement is yes. on yes. the new Taylor Swift album. But uh, she doesn't seem to like it that much. Yeah, it, it like I was surprised because I'm like I don't I'm obviously not a Taylor Swift's target demographic, but like <laughs> you're not <laughs> like I, I like I like to like keep you know keep abreast of like what the interest is in uh in her music because she is just such a force in mm-hmm. popular culture and apparently like I've seen things like one tweet I saw said. Now Taylor, now Swifties know how it felt when we bought uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. <laughs> like, that seems extreme. So <laughs> I've, I've heard some of it because yeah. I just live in this house right. with it. Uh, I don't like it. Like, right. I've, yeah. It's a lot of slow kind of droning songs okay. that like, uh, I, I, need, I need some sort of yeah. rhythm or something. The only on. like, I know Florence and the Machine has a track on there. Which apparently is a bad track, which sucks because Florence is amazing. And I know one the one uh, f- lyric where she said something like, uh, brand new full throttle, touch me while your bros play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> okay. So what happened was the album dropped and there was like 17 songs on it. Which it's is already, already a lot. That's a lot. And then two hours later, they dropped another like, 17 songs or yeah. something ridiculous there's a there's like almost 40 songs on this album that is too many songs it's a <sighs> so, so supposedly the first drop is like good and then the rest of the songs are like b-sides that aren't good see i watched uh anthony fantano's review of both of them and Horton, and he said it's the reverse the second track is actually a, a little bit better oh. the first uh, the initial release wasn't good at all oh yeah I don't know how Swifties feel about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a very confusing time. Flos in the chat says, but she says the fuck word so much and it's so hot. <laughs> I didn't hear fuck once when I heard it. Uh, I saw a TikTok that was explaining like uh, Swift, Taylor Swift has built a lot of lore in mm-hmm. her lyrics over the past right. couple of albums. And this album is just payoffs and callbacks to all of the other lore that she's built okay so musically there's nothing there okay <laughs> it's just it's just callbacks to what happened it's fan service and, got it and yeah and nothing nothing else. It, it's it's like if you watched uh it's like if you watched the avengers and didn't see any of the other stuff you right know? Okay. Is the way it was explained to me, but I don't yeah. know because the lyrics fucking talk about playing Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. How much? How deep can these lyrics go? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know, man. It's it's a weird time to be alive. <laughs> anyway, hey Will, did you hey. ever try the new Star Wars uh trading card game? Game 
that came out recently. Uh, Mega Dragon. No, I, I don't. I'm not a trading card game guy. I didn't even know there was a new Star Wars trading card game. Is good. What? Where does it fit in the canon? Does wanna, it introduce a woke character? I want to try Bellatro. Yeah, but I, I want that on my phone. That seems like a phone game. Give it to me on my phone. Yeah. Same thing. Unpacking is not on the phone, and that's 100 percent a phone game. That's a fo- you should absolutely be yeah. able to just tap stuff on a screen. There's this weird stigma about phone games, but I mean, give deser- me the game on my phone. Deservedly so, but I feel like a lot of games like Bellatro and Unpacking can translate very easily to the phone. Yeah, if it's I- a click game, yeah, and the click is big enough for a fat finger, then let me do. I that. think Vampire Survivor handled it the best. Because their concern was, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of, like, Vampire Survivor knockoffs on the, on the App Store for free. Yeah. So they just put the game on the App Store for free and found other ways to monetize it. Yeah, and that's a game that works good on the phone because there's only move around and, sh- and one button. Yeah. So that work, that's a good touchscreen. Yeah. I didn't know this was a woke game. Bob playing Twilight Princess. Okay, so I was playing Twilight Princess the other day. <laughs> yeah. And there was a very horribly ugly woman in it. <laughs> and I said, I said, I didn't know this was a woke game. I, I, I bailed out before you caught the cat. Did you catch the cat? I caught the cat. Okay. And it was shockingly easy to catch the cat. <laughs> you know what it is? This is, this is like unrelated. I did get stuck for a hot second. Yeah. I got stuck for a hot second. And I, I realize now where I got stuck in the past. Okay. But you just have to catch two fish. Okay. You don't even have to give the cat the fish. You just need to catch two. Okay. Yeah. I think what it, for me was like I was playing the game. I was enjoying the game. And then I stopped for a little bit. And then when I went back to it, because we had the Wii version, I forgot all the motion controls. So, and like the wolf is like 90% motion controls. So I had no idea how to play anymore. So I stopped playing. The game had really confusing and tacked on motion controls. Mm -hmm. That at the time, everyone was like, oh, this is the only way to play Zelda. And now with the vein of hindsight, we're like, I should have just bought it on GameCube, man. Yeah. So I'm realizing why I stopped playing. And it's more so that the whole game is, hey, go talk to the the whole beginning up until you get to the cat, which is like, an hour mm-hmm. uh the whole game is hey go talk to this person and then you go find the person it's like ah my dog's stuck in a tree go yeah. get that and then we'll talk and then you got to go do that and then the dog's not there the dog happens to be somewhere else so you're bouncing between all these pe- your goal is go do x but the game makes you do all this other fucking right. bullshit to get there which is how games work yeah. but the bullshit isn't fun the, it's literally just you talking to yeah. people and I don't, I didn't like that at all. Yeah. So I stopped playing. I did get stuck a couple times. Uh, the cat thing was one, but that I fixed pretty easily. Uh, there's a part in the very beginning where you have to wrangle up a bunch of goats. Mm-hmm. And I went over there and I started trying to wrangle up the goats and the, the fucking goats wouldn't go in the, in the, in the pen and they just wouldn't fucking go in the pen. And I was sitting there for like 20 minutes and then I realized I had to talk to the guy first. <laughs> if you don't talk to the guy, the goats won't. Yeah, yeah. Cast an invisible wall. Mm-hmm. So the game's just it's just boring. It's just not yeah. my not my thing. That's the end of that. Uh Billiam Bloyd says phone games need to get better. Shame Super Mario Run got dunked on because that was a full ass. I loved Super Mario One. Uh and Nintendo just said nah to that model. Imagine if we got more Nintendo phone games like Super Mario Run. I liked Super Mario Runner a lot. It wasn't, uh, you know, traditional Mario, but it was right. good enough. Yeah. You know what's really good? Um, Super Meat Boy Forever got a lot of flack because it's an auto runner. Right. And you just press one button. Well, there's two buttons, I think. There's two buttons. There's like a, a jump and a, and a slide. Yeah. Um, and that is set up for mobile. That's like a per- I don't even know if it ever came to mobile. I don't think it did. But that's a perfect uh way for Mario to translate yeah. to mobile. But yeah, I I think uh there's plenty of space for Nintendo to have uh some mobile stuff and they have a whole company for that. Yeah. I'm sure they'll I I think their uh Mario Kart Tour is probably doing phenomenal for them. Mm-hmm. Uh Bob, breaking news. Okay. Uh, we got games coming to Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. Oh, shit. We got Nintendo 64 games coming. You ready? Uh, no. <laughs> what, what is this? It's uh, Extreme G. 
and Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Nintendo 64 game? Yeah. The fuck is Iggy's Balls? I have no idea. I have n I mean, Extreme G, the box art looks vaguely familiar from like Blockbuster, but I've never heard of Iggy's Wrecking Balls before. Oh, I've seen that box art. Yeah. Wait, where's the game? Oh, this looks like ass. Yeah. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> Thanks for the You know what? More games better, but kind of interesting, interesting yeah. choices. We still don't have uh Mario Land for the yeah. Game Boy. And that is 35 years old mm -hmm. as of two days ago. Let's get Quest 64, Nintendo. Is that a Nintendo IP? No. But I mean, like, there are third-party games on there. True. That's a huge game. Yeah. Uh, uh, do we have any more notifications? I don't think. Oh, and the Dank Knight with 37 months. That's what it do, Yugi. <laughs> and Jeffrey Sorensen with 34 months feels longer than 34 months. Oh, what are you trying to say? Um, that's it. Okay. Uh, it's Gus Gus just yelled Bob. Like he wants to get your attention. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, Mario's Hotel begs to. Oh, yeah. People are saying that Mario Land is a very bad game. It is not great. No. But. I think it deserves. Some there are definitely worse Mario games. <laughs> definitely. I got bad thumbs. Makes joystick controllers a pain. I saw the Omni Odin mod, and that is perfect. Is there a standalone product that has all that without having to mod a controller? Keycap buttons, tilted WASD, large gap. So, unfortunately, that is the best one. But you can go on AliExpress and find things for pretty cheap uh, that would kind of be close to what you're looking for. Uh, also, Etsy has a bunch of stuff, but uh, I think one of them, one of the guys is called Keycade, but they're pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, go check on AliExpress, honestly. You might be able to find some good stuff there. Um, but make sure that it's going to work for Nintendo Switch or whatever consoles you want to use it on. They should work. They all work on... Uh, GP2040 firmware, which is playable on Switch. Anyway, DJ Skeletor gifted five subs. Huh. If, uh, DJ Skeletor, I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Edward Bova had a message saying someone stole your logo. <laughs> Our? Oh. He, he gave a... Oh, page not found. Oh, no, that's to the... Um... He also, I saw before he asked what my take was on Hasbro oh. and Playmates teaming up to make Power Rangers toys. Who stole our logo? Yeah, who stole our logo? Nintendo Life had a video told the Switch controller has a screen. They're talking about actually ripped off your logo. Nintendo Life? Nintendo Life. All right, you look that up. I'll talk about the okay. Power Rangers thing. So, for those Hasbro owns the Power Rangers IP, like the whole thing. Uh, and they've been making uh, the action figures for it and, like, shepherding it. Uh, and now, apparently, they're not going to make the action figures for it anymore. You know, Hasbro's one job to make toys. They're not going to do that. They're, they've are they licensed it to Playmates, who make the Ninja Turtles action figures. And they're going to handle uh, production and distribution of all Power Rangers figures going forward. That's interesting. Uh, I saw a tweet from Kyle Higgins, who wrote the excellent Boom Studios Power Rangers comic, and that said, from day one, Hasbro never understood what they bought or wanted to do with the Power Rangers. And I think that is indicative of this whole, the whole thing. Like Hasbro bought Power Rangers because they wanted, they thought they could become like a big player in like the entertainment industry, not realizing that they're a fucking toy company and they just make toys based on things in the entertainment industry. So... Yeah, now they have this like fairly valuable IP that they don't really do much with. Um, and now they're putting it out to a company that specializes in not only making toys, but like putting out toys and like 
shepherding a brand through thick and thin. Playmates has been a Ninja Turtle toy since the beginning and continues to make them. Not the best Ninja Turtle toys, but the most available Ninja Turtle toys. So my only hope is that Playmates makes a good, decent six inch scale collector's uh, style uh, action figure for Power Rangers, similar to like, you know, this, but, there you, go. you know, but for Power Rangers, because the Hasbro line, the Lightning Collection, not great. They didn't release entire teams of, they're overpriced. They're like missing characters and stuff. So, yeah. So this is the controller that uh, steals our logo. Uh, I gotta be honest. So many different logos look like our logo. <laughs> the Witcher like wolf from the netflix show looks like our logo yeah a lot there's a lot yeah. i see it all over the place. i also see wolf den just the name used yeah all the time there's a fitness people, place like within walking distance of my house <laughs> pe people uh take pictures of stuff and show me yeah like all the time so uh yeah it just it happened there, there's uh i think two different twitch streamers that have this exact logo uh and uh Mine was first, so fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just I feel like it's just easy to think like I want a logo that's a wolf, and then it ends up just looking like this. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't want to say this, but there's a lewd MLP artist that literally has your name, Bob. My name, Wolf Den, or Bob. Where is what is their name? What's their name exactly? So I can look it up, but only for only so I can make sure that the name isn't exactly the same. Not because I'm interested in the pornography that they have. <laughs> Wolf Den. Okay, well that's just our that's just our name. Yeah, they're they're gonna have to uh, my little wolf cub. Okay, don't do that though. Alchemist, thank you for the seven months. A friend of mine uh, recently started uh, got a Steam account. Okay, uh, and he told us his name was. Uh, bitch one at <laughs> okay. it, it's a it's an old reference like within my friend group uh it's not that so but i searched that in steam because i thought that's what it was i was shocked how many people have bitch one in their steam username oh <laughs> yeah interesting all right, thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com, no, uh, anywhere and everywhere you get audio podcasts from. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Freaking uh, Wood and Jackson both stop streaming. Oh. Well, what the fuck, guys? They don't want they don't want the wolf then red. Nope. Too scared. Too scared. They don't like our our audience. Our audience is too only we can handle our only we can yeah. contain this audience. <laughs> anyway. Uh go go watch AJ. Uh I'll see you all on Thursday. I don't know what the hell we're gonna do. Uh I'll see you on I got a video coming out. Thursday about Delta on the floor. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.